During the January 6th committee hearings, we got a glimpse into a White House meeting that took place six weeks after Donald Trump lost the 2020 election, a meeting former White House aide Cassidy Hutchinson called unhinged. Well, first of all, the overstock person, I, I've never, never, never been to who this guy was. Actually, the first thing I did, I walked in, I looked at him, and I said, who are you? Cipollone and Hirschman and uh, whoever the other guy was showed nothing but contempt and disdain uh, of the president. What they were proposing, I thought was nuts. To have the federal government seize voting machines, that's a terrible idea for the country. Some comment about like Nest thermostats being hooked up to the internet. Flynn screamed at me that I was a quitter and everything, kept on standing up and turning around and screaming at me. I'm going to categorically describe it as you guys are not tough enough. Or maybe I put it another way, you're a bunch of the motley crew of Trump's outside sycophants, Trump lawyer and the Kraken lady, Sidney Powell, disgraced former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who previously pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about contacts with the Kremlin, and Overstock CEO Patrick Byrne, basically the couch's version of the pillow guy, also floated proposals like naming Powell special counsel to investigate non-existent voter fraud. According to CNN, special counsel Jack Smith is now questioning witnesses about that six-hour meeting, which took place on the night of December 18th, 2020, four days after the legitimate electors had met and finalized the election results in each of their states. The White House meeting ended after midnight, after which the soon-to-be ex-president fired off his infamous big protest in D.C. on January 6th, be there, will be wild, tweet in the wee hours of the morning on December 19th. Joining me now is MSNBC legal analyst Andrew Weissman, former FBI general counsel and former senior member of the Mueller probe. And, and, and I have thought, hey, great to see you as always, Andrew, that that tweet always to me was the most important moment before January 6th itself, right? Because this is when Donald Trump makes January 6th the thing. Most Americans didn't know what January 6th was. Only us super geeks knew that it was the important day in every, you know, election, uh, presidential election year. He made it a thing, called people to the Capitol. So for you, when you look at that meeting and all the people that were there, what does the Jack Smith's interest in that meeting, there's the tweet, say to you? So... Uh it is a very important meeting, and the tweet is very important. Um, but as Zoe Lofgren said earlier uh, in commenting about this, it is important to keep this in context because there's so much more to what Donald Trump was doing because he had engaged in pressuring the Department of Justice. He engaged in pressuring, pressuring um, state electors. Um, he had tried all sorts of ways. So this, he was coming down to the last possible ways of overturning the election and the will of the people. So it's obviously very important, but that context um, around yeah. it should not be forgotten. Um, obviously, what happened at the meeting, as you alluded to, is is just it's completely antithetical to a democracy. Uh, you have people talking about taking over the Department of Justice uh, with the likes of Sidney Powell, of all people. Uh, you have the idea that the military, with no facts whatsoever, would seize voting machines and redo the election. Um, again, completely antithetical to a democratic process. And the tweet uh, really fits in with that, uh, that theme, which is that if you, one of the things that the former president was trying to do was say, OK, here's another way to pressure uh, Congress, uh, if, if none of this works. So um, to me, this suggests that it's both looking at Donald Trump and his activity uh, at that meeting, but also the other people who are there who are definitely not, you know, off the radar screen. Well, I'm right. And let's put them back up again, because you have in that room, you have Donald Trump, obviously, Sidney Powell, Michael Flynn, Rudy Giuliani. We, we talked about them. We have the Overstock CEO, which God only knows why he was there. And some of them wondered the same thing. Emily Newman, who's a Trump administration official, Pat Cipollone, who's the White House counsel, who also talked to the January 6th committee. You have Trump advisor Eric Hirschhorn is the one who said that's nuts. All this is b bananas. Derek Lyons, who's the staff secretary. Mark Meadows, who keeps coming up. And um, Matt Morgan, who is a Trump campaign lawyer and Robert O'Brien national security advisor. Afterwards, Cassidy Hutchinson snaps a photo 
of literally Mark Meadows walking Giuliani out to make sure he leaves. Okay, so all of that happens. Trump then tweets sometime after that, it's going to be wild. I, I note that because the two key dates, Andrew, had passed. December 8th, which is when they have the formal sort of finalization of the electoral count process. And then this uh, December 14th date, which is when the electors have, have set it up in all of their states. The real electors have done what they're going to do. And yet Trump comes out of this six-hour meeting saying something's going to happen on January 6th. It seems like that's the key, right? Because the question is, well, what did he say is going to happen? What did he conclude from that meeting was going to happen? Because you've got a lot of January 6th defendants saying Trump is who brought me here. Trump is who made me do this violence. What do you, absolutely. I mean, your and I would, uh, yeah, absolutely. I would add to that that list. That's that's excellent, um, Joy. I would add to that list that they'd gone to court and lost everything. So the yes. challenges, all the reason those dates are so critical is that they actually had their opportunity to be heard and they lost all of those cases. And Pat Silvani to the January 6th committee said something that I thought was right on point. Um, he said, you know what, there's a certain place in time where yeah, it's put up or shut up. And it's like, right. you have evidence, this is the time to tell us. And to this day, there is no evidence. I mean, we just have to look at the recommendation of the DC bar today that Rudy Giuliani should be disbarred because he had no evidence to support the claim that he made in federal court that the election should be overturned. And to me, it's all of a piece. There is no factual evidence. Um, so you know, that is really the key to uh, the reason why I think there will be a criminal case by Jack Smith is because there's, to this date, no factual support for any of the steps that they were taking. Um, and it right. they and the, be more serious. And the thing is that, that, it, that I can't get out of my mind is that they, they meet for six hours with these this sort of Looney Tune crew. But somehow Donald Trump, and not just him, Steve Bannon on January 5th says basically, watch your butt, something's going to happen tomorrow. They came out of that meeting with something of a plan. We don't know what it was, but it's hard for me to believe that they didn't come away, or at least Donald Trump didn't come away believing that after all those legal failures, after they had exhausted the, ele the, the true electoral college process, what is it he think they could do? It was all over. And yet he believed if he marched to the Capitol, something was going to happen. I feel like it's so incriminating. I'd be shocked if uh, he wasn't indicted. And how shocked would you be if he's not? I, I just don't think, I, mean, I don't even go there because I just think it's going to happen. And to your answer yeah. your question of what do I think the strategy was, I think the strategy was and still is might makes right. Um, this was just a yeah. simple question of I don't care about the facts. I don't care about the law. This is a question of whoever can just have power and can keep it, regardless of principles, regardless of the fact that we have a long history of a peaceful transition of, of power in this country. Yeah. Um, so I just think that is what was going on, was just what is the next step, which is why they were talking about having the, ordering the military to, to yes. redo a vote. It, 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 it would be shopping. like storming the Oscar stage when the only purpose of the people on the stage is to read what's in the envelope. Literally, the vice president at that point is the guy on the Oscar stage reading the envelope. Everything is over. And so for them to think that somehow they could make him do something that he didn't have any power to do, I'm with you. It tells me that they thought that something violent was going to happen. It, that, my opinion alone, but uh, Andrew Weissman, it's always great to have you on. Uh, your opinion matters much more than mine because you're actually an actual expert. Thank Not you very, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Nice.